Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. Did you know that you can set up archiving and destroy rules in your ServiceNow instance? That's what I want to talk about in this video. Come with me. I've got a table that I just created recently. Check out my other video. I'll link to it up above for application fingerprinting or hashing and fingerprinting to do quick comparisons. I have a table called application crawl histories. This is part of my application that crawls the ServiceNow store pulls back any updates so I can make my Friday SSH episodes. But I quickly, I think, quickly I'm going to run out of room or I'm going to use up too much space on this table. So it's a good candidate for setting up an archive rule in my personal developer instance or my PDI. Now I've never set up an archive rule. I just read about it and I'm going to do it with you watching and for the first time so we can see how all this works. So what I understand most of the archiving stuff lives under this menu item, System Archiving. And you can see there I've got Archive Rules, Archive Log, uh, Archive Destroy Rules, Archive Destroy Log, Archive Status, and then some Archive Properties and Tables. Now I'm just going to focus on the rules, and if we have time here I'm going to do a Destroy Rule. But let's go ahead and go to Archive Rules. Again, I'm in my PDI and you see there's already some stuff set up from out-of-the-box applications that's doing some archiving. So, number one, I didn't even know that existed, um, but I want to create my own. I'm not going to mess with anything out of the box, so I'm going to use this new button here, and I'm going to point it to that application crawl histories table. Now, one thing I noticed because of the nice little helpful banner on this form is that it only it's application scope specific, application scope specific, in order to do the archiving. So you could get into some gnarly situations where you've got data stretching across applications. If that's the case, this video is not for you. I'm going to try to keep it simple and do a basic archive rule. So let's just call this application crawl histories. And I want to say uh, greater than 30 days old. So that's about all I need for my purposes. If I can just see a few crawls, that's uh, 30 days would be four crawls. You know, I do a crawl a week, four to five crawls. So we're going to use the application crawl history table. I might do this for another table, probably the version history sometime in the future, but right now I'm just going to focus on this application crawl history because I did not want it to get crazy out of whack. Um, I'm not worried about retaining references in this because, again, I don't see me using this data, but I do need to add a condition. So we're going to say uh, created, and then I'm going to do relative to, uh, let's say, before 30 days ago. So we'll do days, 30 days ago. So I want to look for anything created before uh, 30 days ago, and let's go ahead and I'm not going to worry about, I'm not going to restore anything. Um, and that's where you'd set up this auto rearchive option, um, but I'm not probably not going to restore anything. So that's it. I'm going to hit save. Again, I've never done this before. Uh, record estimate recal record estimate recalculated. It sees 2,523 records that would be affected by this. And um, let's see, archive related records, archive run. How do I run this thing? Interesting. Um, does it just happen automatically? Automatically? Let's see. Uh, restore archived records, let's say create a destroy rule, create an archive rule is what I just did. And we did that, we did all that stuff, submit, calculate the estimated number, what to do next. After verifying that the archive rule is selecting records as expected, activate the archive rule. If you do not want to wait for the scheduled job to run the archive rule, you can manually start the run archive, archive rule by clicking run archive now. Okay, so there must be, ah, I missed an active button here. Um, that showed up when I saved the form. So let's go ahead and check the active button and we'll save it again. And it sounds like now I'll have a run archive now button. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go look at the table real quick before I run the archive. So we'll go to application crawl histories. We see I've got 10,070 records. So let's go back to my archive rule and we're going to go ahead and run the archive now. Running archive rule application crawl histories greater than 30 days old. Um, so let's go, I'm just going to start refreshing here and see what happens. Now, while we're waiting on that, what is supposed to happen is it's supposed to create an archive table. So a table named AR underscore and then the table name. My table name is X underscore 417399 underscore store, blah, 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 blah. So um, there should be an archive table at some point during this process. Interesting. I don't see anything yet. Let's go back to the archive rule. And, ooh, archive run. 
date. 32 seconds. If started three batches of 190? That's interesting. Archive run. Let's go ahead and open one of these up. I'm just curious. I've never seen how this works. Created from table to table. Okay, there's that AR underscore that I was just telling you about. And it has an ID. This is very interesting. Oh, we're up to 333. I'm just going to refresh there. So those are still... Oh, 400. Okay, this number is climbing uh, as it started. It's it's interesting that there's three of them. I didn't hit three, but um, yeah, we'll just let it do its thing. And archive map, crawl history is greater than 30 days old. Not say anything there. Let's go to the table now. Go back to the table. Application crawl histories. Okay, it's shrinking. Yep, look at that. So it was 10,070. Now we're down to 8,881. So it's actually working. It's archiving my data. Um, next run date will be today at 11 at Pacific. These are, okay, one's completed and two more are active. So this must be like a threaded process, right? Like it sends out, because that one completed after 523, but the other two are still cranking. They're almost at 2,000 in aggregate there. All right, so I feel good about this. That one just completed 1,000. Oh, it must be 1,000 is the, yeah, so 2,523. So it's, uh, it threads 1,000. Interesting uh, cap. So I just learned something. Um, so there's nothing left to archive. That'll run on the scheduled job, so I don't have to maintain it or anything. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this form. Uh, archive related records. So I'm not seeing the actual records that got created. Uh, let's go to... I'm going to refresh my page so that my menu refreshes, my all menu here, because I'm wondering if in the archive tables there'll be a link to my archived application crawl histories. Wait for this to load. There we go. System archiving. And there it is. Archive application crawl history is now a table showing up in my menu item, so I didn't have to do that. It just showed up there. And then here is a 2,523 archived records. And if I click on one, I should see the release notes, the application details. Okay, so everything is intact and uh, looks like exactly like I need it. I can restore the record and related records or I can show the archive log entry. So I'm good. Um, this is looking good. Now I've got a table that's going to maintain itself. Last thing I want to do is set up a destroy rule. I want to destroy the archive data after I said I did 30 days. So after 90 days, that data can go. I really don't care at that point. So we'll call this destroy application crawl history archives. And the table is going to be, oh, I have three tables for application archive application crawl history. That's not what I wanted. I didn't want three tables. Interesting. Um, so item amount of time records will stay in the archive before they're destroyed. So we'll say 90 days. So that'll be a total life of 120 days. Okay, so let's say 60 days. That'll be a total life of 90 days, right? So it's 30 days to come off the regular table, 60 days to get destroyed from the archive table. And uh, we'll go ahead and save that, just like we did the other one. And there's probably not going to be a record estimate because I don't have anything that's that old. Uh, so let's just recalculate estimate. Yeah, zero. So nothing there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and activate it. And that way, when that does happen, that archive should stay up to date. So um, two things you just saw there. One, creating an archive rule. Um, lots of stuff happened in the background. It created a, another table, and it's moving the stuff over there and kind of storing it in a uh, less computationally intense way. So it's not indexed like the rest of the tables. I think the number and like two other fields are actually indexed. And so this is taking up less resources, less compute resources. So that was the archive rule. And then the destroy rule is to when to get it out of that archive, when to take it away. So in my use case, 30 days on my application crawl histories, 60 days in the archive, and that sucker is gone. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in archiving data inside their ServiceNow instance. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.